And if you're joining us right now, we're just getting our second conversation for this morning started. And uh, we are talking about a grant fund call uh, for proposals in the agricultural industry. And here to talk um, all about that. We are joined by Dr. Osman Martinez, who is the CEO of the Ministry of Economic Development, as well as Neri Sams, who is Interim Program Manager from Resilient Rural Belize. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank good you. Good morning. And thank, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to learn all about uh, this interesting initiative. Um, so uh, let's start by um, giving just a little bit of background and context uh, as to how uh, this um, call came about. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, a, it's an agriculture in initiative mm -hmm. and it has to do due to the changes that the farmers are experiencing, um, the drought, uh, the intense rains and the flooding and of course uh, the assistance that they need to help them manage better their crops, um, use innovative methods, resilient practices, um, work as a group because we know the effort of working as a group, the multiplier effect. And also to allow us to produce for local consumption for the tourism industry and all that. So this program helps the farmers from obtaining seeds all the way to marketing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it, it's, it does so um, in groups, in groups of farmers. Mm -hmm. Formal groups or not formal groups. Theo, let's, let's talk about the, the, the matching grant, grant um, formula that we've been seeing uh, a lot more recently in, in different ministries, where oftentimes there is a grant release for people to be able to uh, pursue a particular project or idea. This time around, you're asking for a financial or in-kind commitment. Mm -hmm. Explain it for us. Well, this is uh, a bit the equation that is being used is a little bit um, different and I would say innovative. No? Mm -hmm. The reason is that we will be dealing with uh, different farmers, it's not only one. And these are uh, farmers that fall within the MSMEs, the mm -hmm. micro, small and medium en uh, size enterprises, which um, also you have to consider that they have different mentality, yeah. they have different uh, way of thinking, and at the same time we are giving them the opportunity to have their own input, but not only input uh, as to say uh, I like A, B, or C, mm -hmm. but also as to have ownership in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Many of times um, governments have come up with very good ideas, <coughs> uh, but no one takes ownership. Why? Because they have never had the opportunity to invest. And so uh, in this case, this program has um, between 10 and 15 percent uh, contribution mm -hmm. from the beneficiaries which uh, will help them to to have that ownership what we are looking for is sustainable projects mm -hmm. we have many projects uh, throughout the history of Belize projects that uh, are very good but they have never been sustainable and the question is is it the government's fault or is it everyone's fault yeah and at some point all of us have to take responsibility so it's the idea of getting the ownership of the, of the project or, or um, concept that they're working with. Correct. I see you shaking your head here. Tell me about your experience, why Cor this is important. Correct. Correct. It starts from the design of the business plan. Yeah. A SWOT analysis is conducted with the members of the group. And we learn their strengths, weaknesses, and it threats. And it's done in three areas, uh, marketing, production and the organizational structure. I know some of our POC members are keen that we not only invest in the production and, and equipments, but that the group know how to work together and what they are in it for in the long haul. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, coming up with the contribution, it's their decision how they want to do that. Yeah, They can say, um, we will use from our fields the investments to contribute my 1,000 if that's what we need to contribute. Yeah. Um, so far, we haven't had a group that has requested a loan, yeah. but we are also making that available by the working with the credit unions. Should the farmer need a small loan to assist with their counterpart um, in terms of cash, then 
We support them with a letter and their business plan to the credit union or DFC or National Bank so that then they can get that support. Does the match for the funds have to be financial? 10% uh, is cash and 5% is in-kind labor. Okay. That's for the larger formal groups. Okay. And the not formal groups, it's total 10%. Five and five. Mm -hmm. Okay. 5% cash, 5% in kind. Yeah. And when we do that, the farmers work with us as to how their interjection of funds will be presented. Yeah. So it's phased in. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have the full 10% when the um, business plan is signed or the agreement is signed. Okay. We, we work it with phase with them. So you help yeah. them identify where they'll be able to get it from yes. um, to be able to contribute towards the Correct. project. Correct. Oh, nice. And may I add here, uh, the most important part is, say for example, um, the program comes up to $100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten percent in kind would be $10,000. Mm -hmm. But if you have, um, say for example, 20 uh, members mm -hmm. within the association, then you end up dividing the 20 by 10, you know, mm -hmm. which is uh, just a mm -hmm. small portion that yeah. each farmer will uh, have no imagine um, uh, uh, small farmers owning five, ten acres of land um, and having access to a good road, mm -hmm. having ac access to a good storage facility, yeah. to irrigation system, to um, a greenhouses. Uh, this on itself will actually be introducing science and technology, mm -hmm. something that they won't be able to afford on their own. Correct. At the same time, the objective is to increase the yield. Uh, to reduce the operational costs yeah. and at the same time to be able to compete with uh, the quality yeah. of the product, you know, the appearance of the product, which is uh, essential um, for the development of the agro producers. Um, normally, the agro producers in Belize have a, a competitor, a phenomenon which is contraband. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And that is a huge um, enemy, you know, for, for the development of the agro producers. And so it is important to understand that by them being able even to compete by eliminating contraband, because we can eliminate contraband with two uh, main phases. One is quality of the mm -hmm. product, and two with price. Mm -hmm. So for example, if the fuel is cheaper in Belize, why would you go over to Chetamalto fuel? You know? mm -hmm. Right? So uh, we, we don't need to enforce our borders. It's just a matter of being able to compete locally. Mm -hmm. And so this will give the, the farmers the opportunity to to be able to, one, transport their, br be able to bring out their product out of their farms. Mm -hmm. Because their, the farmer's road had been abandoned for many years. Oh, yeah. If you go to Nago Bank, Trio, Copen, San Carlos, I mean, the farmers actually had to make adjustments onto their vehicles. Mm -hmm. Their vehicles look like the uh, monster trucks, you know? And this is not uh, healthy for their economy yeah. because uh, Every time they would go in and bring out, uh, get their product out, they will also have to make a stop at the mechanic shop. Yeah. Because that vehicle was never designed to be a monster truck. Yeah. Yeah. It was designed to be a regular vehicle. You know, and, and let's just get some clarification there, because we hear very often where government representatives talk about fixing the sugar roads, but there are kind of like the main thoroughfares, but then you have the, the, the roads that are actually within your own property, which is hard to maintain. Yes, I mean, I think it has the Ministry of um, Infrastructure, uh, in this case, uh, ministry that falls under the Minister Honorable uh, Julius Espat and mm -hmm. his CEO, Victor Espat. Um, I believe um, they have done a fantastic job uh, in helping to maintain these roads uh, with limited resources. It is a challenge indeed, you know, to, to go on to the, to the private roads. You know? yeah. You know, these are no longer considered secondary, not even tertiary roads. These are actually private. Yeah. And nonetheless, we need to have an enhanced mechanism to help our producers if we are serious about growing our economy and growing not only on nominal GDP, but on real GDP. And that, uh, in effect, will have a, it will increase the, will reduce the gap between the, um, the inequality of the dis distribution of wealth Mm -hmm. uh, reduce poverty, create employment, and so it, it has a domino effect once uh, that investment is done. And uh, that, that was actually, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna, that, that, that was gonna be my question because uh, we had earlier spoken a little bit about 
the sustainability mm -hmm. and resilience element, uh, but I was uh, also interested to know that takes into account growth as well, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that eventually um, the farmers will be more empowered. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that aspect, the growth and, and development of uh, the rural that, that, that we hope to achieve by this? Okay, so um, our program works with uh, eight commodities. We have six vegetables, uh, one fruit and honey. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, a business plan can have two or three of these commodities. And it's important to work with the farmers with a planting schedule because as we see with the onions, mm -hmm. you can try and store the onion uh, and there has to be good communication so that we know what's the, the volume mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. to be produced and when it will be ready. So we will facilitate that. And of course, we work very closely with the Ministry of Agriculture, mm -hmm. the extension officers, so that we know the farmers who are producing. And Kaya does produce onion, sweet pepper, tomato, everything like that, similar to Corozal. So there has to be this uh, networking communication yeah. to en uh, enable the farmers not to have this overproduction and then price going down. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a mechanism to, to really master that. Or wastage, yes. Yeah, or, or add um, value by processing. Mm -hmm. So sure. if a group would like to add value, that's also, uh, we can fund also that, that aspect for them. This is yeah. also a, an area I know um, very clearly that you're trying to introduce climate resilient options for the agriculture sector. Now, my question is, are you also offering the technical expertise for this? Because, you know, whether it's changing climate, changing in weather patterns, it feels like uh, the obstacles being thrown at the sector are unpredictable already. Correct. Well, yes, and <laughs> the technical aspect will definitely be included. Actually, there is a component, you know, to um, help with technical assistance. Correct. Uh, in addition to that, I have the opportunity to work with the international funding uh, institutions, the IFIs, mm -hmm. and they are always willing to help us with consultants, uh, consultants that will be paid by the IFIs. And I think this also um, brings a great opportunity to, to bring this technical assistance. One of the main um, elements in, on the success of uh, the equation for, for any producer is that we need to acknowledge that we need to increase their human capital. Mm. And that is something that um, uh, a component that um, the government has acknowledged. Uh, we will definitely take advantage of all the technical support that the IFIs are giving to us. The Ministry of Agriculture have a wealth of knowledge and, and huge uh, high human capital. And we need to see how we can use them as well. No? In addition, we work along with the Ministry of Agriculture, but also with the Ministry of Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right. Because they are, uh, they are the ones responsible to build this road. These roads have to be um, uh, resilient. climate resilient. Mm -hmm. um, we, they have to have proper drainage. And they are the ones who will be overseeing the, the uh, supervision. Uh, why? Because at the end, they will be <laughs> the ones responsible mm -hmm. to maintain these roads. So uh, we work hand in hand with them, and I am, can tell you that the investment is not small. I mean, one mile of road is very expensive. It's between 200,000 to almost 400,000 Belize dollars per mile, and that depends on the area, no? Yeah. Um, it depends where we, if the um, materials that we need are nearby, then that reduces the cost. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, we will have to transport that materials from a distance that it will cost us more. Yeah, adds on transportation costs mm -hmm. as well. Yes. College. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are you hoping? I, I know right now it's kind of just an expression of interest phase. You're, you're hoping people will come to you with ideas and, and pursue these particular uh, funds. But what are you imagining are going to be some of the projects that, that will fit? Okay. Um, we already have identified 15 groups of farmers. Okay. Right? And we have already, through the program oversight committee, approved four business plans mm -hmm. in the process of approving a couple more. So we need the farmers to come forward through the Ministry of Agriculture's offices. And we do have an extension officer assigned to each district. Mm -hmm. We have the form. They express interest. And we can also assist them to complete that, yeah. that proposal form. Right? 
Then that is the deadline to submit is the end of November. Mm -hmm. So we compile all that and we will go to a screening and um, 15 will be selected. And we anticipate that they can ask for anything from seed improvement to drainage and irrigation to cover structures to solar pumps to a facility to process fruits to, do to value marketing. Adding. To marketing. So mm. any aspect within that chain that the farmer needs assistance in any of the eight commodities that we're dealing with. Nice. Or even the cold storage, I think you had exactly. mentioned, right? Yes. Yeah. Maybe we, they're, they're, we know the farmers can't produce. Mm -hmm. S what they need is to have a longer period of supplying the market. Mm -hmm. So once we can do a good practice of harvesting the proper way and then storing, that we, we believe can assist the farmers to then increase their income and be able to use their funds in any other activity that they so choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and uh, based on perhaps you know what you're hearing from the farmers, is it uh, is there perhaps one or two things in particular that that um, perhaps is they is common and that they need that they're talking about they need the most, or is it be, or are the needs uh, more or less spread out evenly based uh, uh, on all the things that you kind of mentioned, from processing to seeds to roads, or is it or is or is there more need in one area than the other? Um, it's, it's, would say, like specialized, for example, okay. with the hot pepper, mm -hmm. because uh, we would really like to help them. Presently, they're, they're not practicing a nursery facility to raise their seedlings. Mm -hmm. So that week, we can see, is a weakness that they have. They're starting already on the wrong foot with their seedlings. Most of them um, plant in slash and burn area, which is not a problem. However, um, the mechanization then is not is not possible mm. and putting in the drainage yep. so that water can then leave the the land mm -hmm. when when it rains torrentially mm -hmm. so improving the irrigation and drainage for majority is 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 required um, some would like to have the structures because they want to produce this high quality sweet pepper mm -hmm. um, some wants to know if there is a tomato variety that can be grown in this structure mm. and what, the, what does that mean and what other practices they, they have to have to ensure because sometimes you need pollination otherwise you don't get any fruits. Right? So these specific commodities were chosen based on what? In, 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 in the design, mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of Agriculture had a long list mm -hmm. and we are told that they reduced to these um, eight, eight commodities because as priority for the ministry. Because they've had challenges or because mm -hmm. they have so much prospects? Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is, it uh -huh. is both. And we need to understand that, um, yes, we can produce in Belize, but we will not be able to produce everything. Yeah. You know, so the um, vegetables and fruits that are um, acclimatized to be produced in Belize and that... Um, have shown that our producers can produce. Uh, so we need to support those um, uh, fields and, and support those farmers who are producing uh, mm -hmm. certain products. Um, economics teaches that every country have a, it has to be specialized. And, yeah. uh, we have a comparative advantages in certain products mm -hmm. uh, while we have disadvantage on others. And I have a, from what I understand is that the yet products that um, that were selected were actually the that criteria was used, you know, mm. where we have that comparative advantage. Nice, yeah. definitely honey. I know we've we've yeah. talked we've we've talked to uh, some of the honey producers on World Bee Day, and mm -hmm. you know there seems to be great promise in the area. I guess it's just getting people to overcome their fear of bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of the introduction of yeah. the Africanized one yeah. uh, with European. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. other areas. So we're talking about cabbage, carrots, hot pepper, onion. Sweet pepper, tomato. Pineapple. So pineapple. And then honey. And then honey. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, also in our, um, in the RRB, we have um, technical um, support mm -hmm. in um, climate agriculture. We have in... Um, marketing mm -hmm. and we have an officer responsible for the organizational component of the groups mm -hmm. so we provide all this assistance to all groups that we mm -hmm. engage with okay 
Right. So what is the interest you're getting from the farmers at this point? Yes, the farmers want us to help them and we will have limited funds. So <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's one of the drawbacks. But um, if we do a very good job, then I'm sure CEO can <laughs> more assistance. Well, you know. And she, she, she put me <laughs> You'll have to find the funds if yeah. there's some great projects out there. I was put in this pattern in public. No? Yeah, <laughs> live on TV. <laughs> so <laughs> your answer here is? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. that is, I, I believe um, the IFIs, um, in this case, IFAD, uh, you know, mm -hmm. which is an entity with the, in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, along with Green Climate Fund, GCF, mm -hmm. they are ready to help Luis. Our problem has been implementation. Mm -hmm. We have failed in implementing projects. So, for example, um, this project started back in 2018. Mm -hmm. Actually, the it was signed in December of 2018. And the disbursement came, the first disbursement came a few months um, after 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, practically, we are just getting the, the project on to run. No? Um, and so we have 20 million U.S. dollars that have been sitting there. Yeah. Uh, we need to mm -hmm. pump that thing into the beneficiaries, which are the producers. Yeah. Uh, pump it into the ecosystem that will help with the growth of GDP and real GDP, which is important. And it's a way to stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. And do we, uh, when you talk about you know, GDP growth and uh, stimulation of the economy, do we, uh, or you know, how, what, what, or what, if, how do I put it? Percentage or, uh, of of the economy as a whole? Does the does the the sector then um, are we working with? How much uh, do they contribute, and how much do we hope uh, that you know they or we project that you know they might? Okay, so that's a very good question. And before I answer your question, allow me just to give you one piece of data that which is very important. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the uh, IDB, which is the in a International Development Bank, Inter-American Development Bank. Uh, they did a study which shows that, uh, for example, Belize uh, have 98% of the businesses are uh, fall within the MSMEs, and 2% are considered large enterprises. And the government had focused on the 2%, and they have forgotten about the 98%. Mm -hmm. And this is not a problem that only Belize has, but it's a problem that um, they, during that study, they cite in Latin America and the Caribbean, and countries uh, with a developing economy actually uh, face the same problem. We forgot about the MSMEs. So this is a great opportunity now to see that this, uh, the, the Bresenio administration and, and through plant beliefs are promoting that we will invest uh, within the MSMEs and support them. In my personal opinion, the MSMEs should be Belize, the backbone of Belize's economy. Mm -hmm. um, and so your question is, as Ms. Neri says, um, we actually have limited funds. Mm -hmm. uh, the impact will be maybe uh, to three, between three to 5% of the MSMEs. We have around 44,000 um, um, businesses that fall within the MSMEs. Our impact will be maybe 25, 30 of them the most, no? The most 30. Yeah, the most yeah. 30. So it is very limited. But we are hoping that this is the start of great things uh, in the future. You noted earlier that the failure was implementation. Yes. Um, what have you identified to be the cause, and how have you corrected that? The process is a bit frustrating, uh, frustrating uh, since the procurement processes are very long. Um, I have um, had the privilege and, and bliss and honored that I have been able to, to have direct communication with the IFIs. Mm -hmm. And so the procurement process on the IFIs, is, it takes quite some time. Then uh, we have another problem that locally, we also have a part of our procurement process that have to go through the contractor general and the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. which also takes some time, but that had improved significantly. And so we are making great steps. But that is just part of the problem. The other part of the problem is want to do it, have the interest to do it. Because yeah. at the end, we have to understand that we are here to serve the people. Mm -hmm. And if we are not serious about doing it, it won't be done. So I even if a procurement process takes uh, about 100 years, if we start it, then the 100 years will, will come to an end. 
but I have inherited some projects that, uh, three projects, for example. One of them was um, very well on, on its way road safety, but CABE, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is the Integral Security Program, and um, IFAD, which is the RRB. And between both of them, we have 100 million Belize dollars. And that, uh, those projects were, weren't moving any at all. Yeah. And CABE, for example, which is for the uh, Integral Security Program, um, that program was developed in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2015, it was signed and the first disbursement came in. And that's a $60 million project, $60 million. And in 2018, $3.8 million were um, disbursed, of which up to when I uh, came in into, uh, to take over the Office of the Ministry of Economic Development, only monies for salaries were used. So, uh, so we have to identify what is the problem. But one yeah. of the problems is procurement process, and two, the that we want to do it. Yeah, mm. yeah. And sometimes projects like that become reliant on the drivers behind it. So, this is. I, I'm glad that you're able to acknowledge where uh, the failure to implement has taken place before, and that gives you an opportunity moving forward mm -hmm. to be able to mitigate them early on. One of the things I know with this particular um, project is that you don't have to be reg a registered farmer in this right. area mm -hmm. to apply. So how do I get involved? I mean, you have to have some level of expertise, right? I can't wake up today and say, I know how to grow tomatoes or pineapple. Well, the, the registered part is the group. Okay. So the, you can have eight different households, farmers in one area, and they do one thing common, mm -hmm. they market together. Mm. So they are an informal group or a non-registered group. Yeah. And we can work with those farmers. Okay. Their benefits are at maximum 60,000 Belize dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a cooperative mm -hmm. and you have 30 members, 17 members, the volume that we can support you with is up to 240,000 Belize dollars. Okay. Right? So, um, the other important thing to that is the Ministry of Agriculture has registered majority of the farmers in the country. And if we come across any farmer that is not registered, we encourage them or we start the process for them to be registered. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it provides us uh, a lot of information that um, can be used for projections and for statistics and for any any type of analysis that the country needs to do. So this BAME's data, actually our managing information system has that as the backbone. Mm -hmm. So if we get 10 members in a group, we r determine if there are registered farmers by simply placing their name into the system mm -hmm. and we get all their information at one go once they're registered. If they're not, then we can request if they want to and then help them to register. Mm -hmm. Right, and then they would be a part of the entire BAMES. Yeah. Right, and any any exercises, any benefits that can come to farmers if you are registered, it brings that to yeah. you. If you are not registered, then you fall through the. Through well, the even things like after storms, they know where to go exactly. and who to follow up exactly. with to see what happens. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that has happened twice or three yeah. times with the lately. flood. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's a key opportunity there too. Correct. So let's let's talk about where people go if they want to express interest. Okay, it's at all the district agriculture offices in each district. Mm -hmm. um, we have left um, the proposal there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have spoken with the district agriculture coordinator to re record for us the interested farmer group, mm -hmm. and we have extension officers who will then liaise with the farmer group. Mm -hmm. arrange meetings and start assisting them to fill out the proposals right. Good. right so we will provide that assistance to do that you know one one point that i want to mention is when we fail to spend monies from the projects we lose a golden opportunity because we fail to bring in fresh money into our uh, economic system yeah and so um Actually, we are still using monies from 2015. Uh, but, for example, um, GCF, they have 
allocated 500 million U.S. dollars for developing nations. And when we fail to spend monies that had been given to us, that means that other developing nations will have the opportunity to take advantage of these monies. Yeah. And so we will still have like old monies rather than... Um, Tied to other projects. Yeah, rather than, than get new monies. And so, um, and before the IFIs, uh, we actually have to, to, um, to increase our reputation mm -hmm. because a uh, report shows, a uh, study shows that 99.9% .9 of our projects have failed uh, meaning that they are always asking for uh, extension. Um, and sometimes the extension is not an option, which means that the projects will have to come to an end incompleted, and we, will, we would have to send money back. Yeah. You know, and, that and then when you apply again, they think you don't really need it because you didn't use it last time. Mm -hmm. we, we have to understand that we are dealing with people that are very good with numbers. Yeah. And so they will do evaluations for every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if they were giving us, say for example, 10 million US every year, and our capacity of spending was only 5 million, then they will say, I will only give you 5 million, even if we would have submitted a proposal for the same 10 million. Yeah. And then when we ask why, they will say, well, his, the historical data shows that your capacity of spending is only 5 million. So why should I give you more? Yeah. And this is uh, where Belize have feel. Because there are needs all over the world. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there are limited funds. Yeah. So m in that aspect, you know, it is important to note that we are paying special attention. I know that uh, with Minister um, Christopher Koyi and the Prime Minister, we are looking closely at the public uh, sector investment programs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how the spendings are going, yeah. uh, the different projects. So that is one thing that we want to assure the Belizean population that we are working very hard to gain that confidence back from the IFIs. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I've said um, what we will invest in, but yes. we can also not invest in purchasing the land for the farmers, or we will not invest in any environmental activity that can have a problem. So um, those, those are the two main, or pay a loan for the farmers group. Yes. Three things we can't do. All right. The funds. <laughs> Definitely <Yeah>. clarified <laughs> there. <laughs> well, thank you both yeah. for coming in. And of course, we wish you the best of luck. Lo would love to hear about the projects that uh, do follow through. And, uh, you know, especially if you want to bring samples, even better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Allow me just to, I want to say thank you to the team at RRB, yeah. uh, the administration. Um, Resilient the technical, Rural Belize. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, um, the administrators, the uh, technical and the extension officer. I think they are doing a fantastic job yeah. and we have a huge challenge uh, ahead of us, but I have my full confidence that this project will be successful. All right. Yeah. And then last, Marlene, please. Mm -hmm. We, yes, ha we have to encourage uh, females, women to join the groups and youth. We will mm -hmm. be giving extra points if a group that is presented to us, as in women and having youth, youth ages 15 to 24. Nice. So yeah. they'll be getting more points. All yeah. right. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in and giving us this update.